Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free. In this video, I want to talk about the free software that I use for ham radio and for radio communications in general. So behind me I have my computer set up and a couple different radios. I'm going to kind of go over and just give you an overview of what they are and what they do. Uh, and there's a ham radio exercise happening right now in the valley, maybe in like a 50 mile radius. And so there's all kinds of people um, on the air right now. We can turn it up and listen to some of that. Uh, we are currently having an exercise, a communications exercise on this frequency. Oh, that was convenient. And um, so anyway, the software I'm using is, um, this is Kali Linux. It's a Linux operating system. It's really popular for like penetration testing and for hacking, but it's also a great operating system for radio, radio communication. It just works really well. And the software I'm using right now for this waterfall is GQRX. And what it lets me do is see along the spectrum what's happening. So I can be listening, like right now I'm on the 145.6 megahertz. I'm listening to that. But I can see back here on this waterfall um, what else is happening on other frequencies from a range of like the 142 up to 149. So I can see this whole big spectrum. And wherever it shows like a white line like this, I can see there's someone talking. So I could switch my radio over to that. Now I don't have my radio hooked up right now to the software, but that can also be done. You can actually control your radio from the software. If you're not in the ham radio, I apologize. It might be some of this might be over your head. But let me just dive in real quick and show you some of the different components that make up this radio setup. So the actual radio right now that I'm using is this FT2980. It's a Yesu radio. And it lets me tune so I can come in here, we can turn this up. And I can change my frequency. And so right now it's like 145650. So we can come in and uh, change the, the different frequency that we're listening to. Um, and it's got a couple, it's pretty basic. It's kind of sort of like a mobile unit. Some people install this in a vehicle. So it's like a, a mobile unit. Um, it's powered by this power supply over here. Uh, and it's powered, the cables are actually going out the back to hook onto it. This just tells me, if I can focus in here, so this just tells me how much power it is, so 13.8 volts, and this just puts out a nice clean power source um, to power this. Um, this you can power um, using either grid power, like 120 or 240 volts. You can also power it through an inverter uh, using a 12 volt power supply, so you could have this whole thing. If the power was out, I could still run this whole system, including the computer, um, using a backup power system. Down here is an antenna tuner. So this antenna tuner will be used together with this radio, which is a HF radio. So this is the, the radio that lets me talk all around the world. And it's got, again, you can tune the different frequency in. It's got a lot more controls, a much more expensive radio. This one, I think, I don't want to misquote it, but it's a couple, maybe $500 for this radio here. I think this one's in the $150 range. And uh, this here is a watt meter. So this tells me how much power is being used when I transmit. There's different power levels I can transmit on depending on how far I want the signal to go. So this watt meter tells me how much, how powerful I'm transmitting. And then the actual computer, I just have a keyboard and mouse. I have kind of a smaller little keyboard with a small footprint since I don't use it for a whole lot. And then this, is this running right now? Yes, yeah, it's running. So uh, I can see in here that on this waterfall, it shows me who's transmitting and when they stopped. So we see there's people transmitting over here right now. There's people transmitting here. We can change the frequency. And with the cool thing about this is we can actually even go down. So right now we're at 145, but we can go down to like 100 and we can hear radio stations. So here's like the radio station. If I hover over, we see this is like 102 FM. And if I were to turn this up, or I can turn up the sound. I have it down right now. We can listen. And we can hear, oh, it turned down. Uh, what I do, I, me I messed something up. But we can listen and we can actually hear, you know, these different radio stations. So each of these is a different radio station. And although I'm tuned in listening to this one right here, I can see what's happening and I can hover over and see what frequency those are on. So it's a really, really cool setup. I can also record. So I could actually, if I wanted to, I could record this. Sometimes people will send like Morse code or like uh, encoded signals on the radio. So you can record and then decode that. The whole thing making this possible is this uh, Hack RF1 right here. So I just have this plugged into an antenna that's running outside, and this uh, this Hack RF1 has a USB port on the back of it, and that's plugged into my computer down here. 
and so this can actually transmit as well. If I didn't want to transmit, you can get a little thing like this. It's pretty inexpensive, maybe 20 or so dollars. And this just plugs into the computer, has a USB port on it, and then an antenna on the other end, uh, a port place you can hook up your antenna. And this will do the same thing. This lets you, you can use GQRX. There's also a software called uh, SDR Sharp for Windows that does something similar to this. Uh, yeah, so really cool stuff. And then there's all kinds of different things you can, you can do with this. And then one more cool thing I have set up here is I have a Raspberry Pi and I have this Flight Aware. So this is the USB uh, plugged into the Raspberry Pi. It has a little filter, a noise filter there. But what that lets me do is I can monitor uh, different planes. Oh, this isn't my area. But I can monitor flights happening throughout the world uh, using this. So this, if you notice, if we come up here, this is my own, on my own network. So 192.168.11.180. So this is not talking to the internet. This is this map is already downloaded, and it'll show flights happening, like flights that are flying overhead. It it gets the signal from the transponder from the airplanes, and I can see that that plane. So a different radio signal. Obviously, I'm not communicating with the airplanes with this, but it's a cool piece of software. I have an aviation headset here that I'll use sometimes. So it has like a microphone and a headphone. Uh, I can communicate to. This is actually for a helicopter originally, and I got an adapter so I can have the mic and headphone plug into my computer. This is like each of these radios comes with their own just handheld. Uh, this is what you use to communicate with. You press this button and then you can talk. So this whole setup is inside of my shipping container office or studio that I've showed in the past. But let's go outside and look at the antennas. I apologize, it's really windy today. This is the antenna that, this. I have a couple antennas here. This little antenna right there is for the flight aware for picking up the airplanes. Uh, this one picks up just a wide variety of signals. It's the one that you see on that blue screen. And you can see I have a wire running here and that goes up this pole up to this right up there. And I've got a J pole antenna. You can see that. That's also, you can make it yourself that antenna you can make out of a half inch, it's just made out of half inch copper tubing, like for plumbing. And uh, yeah, I'll include, maybe I'll include a link to the instructions of how to do that as well. If you're wondering why I have a setup like this, mostly it's just for a hobby, but I also enjoy being able to communicate independently, independent of my internet service provider or my cell phone provider. Uh, in theory, this, radio right here I can communicate all around the world so I can talk to people in neighboring states or across the country and around the world which is really empowering not only can you talk uh, but you can also send data so kind of like what you do on the internet the bandwidth is much 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 smaller so you couldn't send like HD video it would be very very slow but you could send text messages you could send email uh, you could send pictures like single pictures uh, and you can just share information that way. And there's even some types of software applications that you can run uh, in like a distributed network or in a, in a, in a radio network like this. Um, so it's really cool stuff. And that's why I enjoy doing the ham radio, just for being able to commun communicate. Sometimes there may be like a disaster, like an earthquake or, you know, something happens. Maybe your government shuts off your internet and cell phones. So it's nice to be able to have a backup method to communicate. And you can even have like a little handheld like this. You can get these anywhere from like 30 up to $100. And this will communicate, uh, this will pick up the same signals that my radio here is doing. It's just a, like it's called the two meter ham radio uh, bands. And it's 144, I think, to 148 uh, megahertz. But you can actually just listen like I'm doing. You don't have to have a license to monitor. But if you want to participate and talk on the radio, you have to get your amateur radio uh, license. Um, in the United States, there's a process for that. Different countries have different processes uh, that you have to go through to get that license um, to be able to, basically you learn the rules for what you can and can't do because radio signals can interfere with things like airplanes or you know just all kinds of sensitive equipment and you just wanna know how to use your radio properly so that you're not um, causing problems. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and kind of enjoyed seeing some of the different setup behind me. Again, Kali Linux is a really great operating system for working with hardware and basically any type of communication medium, whether it's a cable or a Wi-Fi network or wireless radio communications like this. 
So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.